Hello, I'm Dr. W.H. Pennywitt. My wife Linda and I are the founders for the Pennywitt Center for Counseling and Education and Pennywitt Ministries. Our office is in Hearst, Texas. We're right on I-820 and we've been in Texas almost six years. You know, ever since we've come to Texas, we've really been working toward the goal of being used of the Lord in mental health therapy and to be more specific, biblical counseling, biblical mental health therapy. And as our therapeutic counseling model, we use temperament therapy. And we're gonna get into a little bit more about what temperament therapy is in videos to come. But for right now, I wanna explain a little bit what we do at the Pennywood Center. At the Pennywood Center, we minister to people of all types. My wife, Linda, specializes in tweens, teens, she specializes in children, adolescents, and the work that she does with, with women and children just are just bar none. I may be a little bit biased here, but I've seen the work that she does, and I would sure want a therapist like her on my side. We also work with people that are addicted to pornography, and you'd be surprised to know that there are just as many women that are addicted to pornography these days as there are men. In fact, I think pornography has pretty much reached a pandemic proportion because it's so widely and easily available on the internet. And what so many people don't realize is that pornography is a physical chemical addiction. Because when you view pornography with your eyes, your brain was not created by God to view those things. And so when you do, it creates a chemical in your brain that's up to 100 times more addictive than crack cocaine. And coming off of it is quite a task. It can be done. We've done it many times with many people. It is a process that just involves setting support structures, teaching the individual what it's all about, and some of the, the chemistry of your brain and how that works. When you first come into our office, you'll do what we call intake. What intake is, is filling out lots of paperwork uh, so that your therapist will learn a little bit more about you. And then we, we do what we call a temperament profile. Now a temperament profile is set up with 54 simple questions that you will answer. And since there are no right or wrong answers, you don't have to have test anxiety. And what, what the theory of temperament is, really what temperament therapy is all about, is a profile. If I were to do a physical profile on you right now, I would get my pen, my paper, my clipboard, and I would say, he's a male, female, certain weight, height, hair color, eye color, skin color. Why? Well, that's just the way God decided that you needed to be. And so in his infinite wisdom, you are you. And God pretty much thinks he just did a perfect job when he created you. Now, if I do a temperament profile on you, I would profile you similarly to the way I did if I were to do a physical profile on you. But what I would do is I would profile the way God wired you to be. And what I mean is this. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why do I keep doing this certain thing? Why do I make the decisions I make? Why do I keep doing these? Why, why, why? We have so many why questions about ourselves. Why do we do the things we do? Why do we say the things we do? Some may say, you know, I'm such a control freak. Why do I do that? Other people may say, you know, I'm so shy. I don't want to be around anybody. Why do I do that? And that may bother you. That may really cause stress in your life. Well, knowing what your temperament is will answer those questions. You know, at the Pennywood Center, when we do a profile on an individual, when we first reveal that profile to them, it's always such a blessing to us because our patients get these wide-eyed looks like, you mean I'm not crazy? And we say, no, you're not crazy at all. This is just your temperament. You have temperament strengths and you have temperament weaknesses. Well, we capitalize on those strengths and we help you with the weaknesses. Now, how would this affect a husband and wife? Well, if the wife knows why her husband does the thing that he does that just exasperates her, or the husband knows why the wife does what she does, then the two can communicate better, the love flows stronger, and everything is better all around. Now, 
why do we want to know what a person's temperament is? Is it just to know what makes you tick or the way God wired you? Well, that's part of it. But the other part is knowing what temperament need is. You see, each one of the five temperaments, the melancholy, the sanguine, the choleric, the phlegmatic, and that fifth temperament is the supine. Each one of those temperaments has what we call a temperament need. Now, a temperament need is something that will be met by the individual one way or the other. I like to put it this way. Meeting a temperament need is much like breathing. Your body needs oxygen. It must breathe, and it will breathe one way or the other. If you try to hold your breath, at most you'll just pass out, and then your body will begin breathing again because it needs that oxygen. Well, meeting temperament need or trying not to meet a temperament need is really similar. And I'll give you an example. A sanguine. A sanguine is a person that needs to be around large amounts of people. And if they're not around people, they tend to get stressed out. And that stress can actually affect you physically. It can actually make you sick. Now, there are two ways to meet a temperament need. You can meet a temperament need in a godly way, or you can, make, you can meet a temperament need in an ungodly way. Now, which way is best? Well, let's go back to the sanguine who needs to be around large amounts of people. Well, you can go to Joe's Bar and Grill every night where there's lots of people, and I imagine that the sanguine could get their temperament need met to be around people quite well. There would be loud music, lots of people around, talking, laughing, people patting you on the back, saying how you're doing. Now, for a sanguine, that would be a good way to, for that person, that sanguine, to meet their temperament need. Temperament need only. But is it conducive to um, spiritual growth? Or if you're a family man, or you're a mother with children and you're married, that wouldn't necessarily be conducive to a happy, successful, fulfilling Christian life. So what would that person do? Well, they could go to Joe's Bar and Grill every night, but that wouldn't be too conducive to successful Christian growth, as I said. But what's the alternative? Well, that same person can plug themselves into the local church and say, Pastor, what can I do to volunteer? I'm certain that there's so many volunteer opportunities at just about every church in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that you could plug yourself into. You could be around lots of people that way, get your temperament need met, and you'd be around a lot of people like yourself. So you see, there's two ways to meet temperament need, either in an ungodly way or a godly way. Now, as we go further on with these sessions, we're going to discuss a little bit more about each of the five temperaments individually. And as we do that, maybe you may see yourself in some of those. And we warn everybody, when you hear about the five temperaments, you may tend to want to self-diagnose. You may tend to say, well, that's what I am or that's what I am. But that can be dangerous. Imagine yourself with a pain in your body sitting at a table with 20 or 30 pill bottles and you think to yourself, well, which pill, which medication do I take? Well, if you take the wrong medication, you might not treat yourself the right way and that can be dangerous. So trying to self-diagnose your temperament can be the same way. So I urge you, go to fortworthchristiancounseling.com, go to dallaschristiancounseling.com, give us a call and let us help you to learn what your temperament is about. We thank you for tuning in and be looking for other videos when we're going to go through the different temperaments. Have a good day.